Well, how about Covington Prince? How y'all doing? Now I'll tell you right off the bat, we got storms going here and rain. You may be, I hope not, but we're going to find out. Mm -hmm. I hope it's so hot I can't drink it, and that's hot. I just poured it up. They perking and poured it up. I know. It has to be hot. We, we got to have hot bacon here, too. So we're going to just quick, this just came out of the Macro Pro Grill. Literally, hot bacon. That's the key. We're making, taking mama's hot, mama's honey mustard, and we're turning into hot bacon honey mustard. And you take your hot bacon, you put it in your bowl, and then you put your honey mustard in here on it. Stir that in. Now that's going to heat the honey mustard. I don't want to put too much because. I want that hot bacon and honey mustard to be hot. Stick it back in the microwave. We might stick it back in the microwave for 15 seconds. Okay. Now one more little slice of bacon. It's hot. Oh, it's hot on my fingers. It's stuck together a little from me. Too much in there last time. All right. We're going to put this bacon. Can y'all see what I'm doing? Come down here a little bit more. I'm in a hurry to get this hot bacon going. So I've got the hot bacon in there and I've got the honey mustard dressing. Now this is just what she y'all watched her make last night. And um, it's absolutely delicious. I did eat some of it last night, just a little bit, and it didn't bother me. So I'm gonna take that as a sign. Yeah, Mama, if you'll take that to the microwave, you sit there, that's all it is, is hot bacon with a honey mustard. Thank you, Okay. And I'm going to be cutting up this chicken. We just heated him up, too. But it's ready to go. I've got the salads done. We're having early, or late lunch, early supper tonight. And, um, the lights are blinking. The, um... It's raining. We're under flood warnings. You name it, we got it going on here. We've had two or three big cloud bursts. Severe thunderstorms till after seven. Yeah, we've had two or three big cloud bursts of rain that have just fallen all over the place out here. And um, it, according to the Weather Channel, when I look, it appears that we're going to have rain through Monday. I don't know. I'm really a little disappointed. But hopefully you all will get a chance to see them. Tonight is the Perseid showers. That's the best time to see all the asteroids or shooting stars, whatever they call them. The Perseids. We've been watching the Perseids for years, have we, Mama? Yeah, but I don't think we'll see them tonight. I don't think so. Um, we studied about them in class. One year when I was in grade school. And ever since then, we have been followers of the Perseids. And uh, you can see sometimes one year we counted 100 or so shooting stars that we want. Okay, now this is hot. See there, that's that hot bacon honey mustard. It's delicious, y'all. I promise. I wouldn't stir you wrong on honey mustard and bacon. And this is just a good old tomato. This is one out of Mama's garden or one out of the farmer's market one. Which one, Mama? No, that one's out of the farmer's market. This is a farmer's market tomato. No, no, that's the Amish tomato. Amish tomato or Amish. We've been grabbing up tomatoes from everywhere. That's where we went today. We was up early. We was already on about it's seven this morning. We had to go pick up some stuff. We went out. We bought us a box of what they call canning tomatoes around here. And that's what they're basically for is just for canning. Uh, but I've got our salads ready. Look here. That's the chicken on there. It's got a little bit of fresh pepper on mine. I'm going to put a little bit more on mine. Mama don't want any. It's got the red onion. Mama got a sprig or two. Now here's the beauty, here's the goodness. You take that hot bacon and honey mustard and you pour it right over that chicken. 
Yes, yes. The chicken. And Mama, are you wanting this? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes Mama, she bites on me a little bit on the it's stuff. It's real bacon. Huh? It's real bacon and it's good, warm honey mustard. You're going to love it, Mama. Let's bless it, Mama, and we're ready to eat. Now, that was a quick one. That was quick. You know, you all know, sometimes we, we take a minute. But today, for a good grilled chicken salad, chicken was already done. Let's bless it. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this meal. We thank you for the company. We thank you that we're able to be together, dear Lord. And we just bless, ask you to bless it for the nourish for our bodies, dear Lord. And dear Lord, just watch over us. Lead God and direct us. And dear Lord, we pray that all those out there that's Join us today, all those prayer requests, all those unspoken prayer requests, dear Lord, you'll just answer each and every one of them in your will, your glory, and in your time. In your precious name we pray, amen. Mm. Okay, Mama, tell, tell me what you think oh. about hot honey mustard bacon dressing. We put a little cauliflower in here. Look at that. Mmm, that hot honey mustard. It flavors good, but it didn't mess the lettuce up. It won't mess I don't know, it's not like wilted lettuce. Look at that, it's on that beautiful piece of chicken. It is still deliciously warm. Mm -hmm. The bacon's still warm. Yeah. It's also good. And this salad is good. No, I like a good salad. A little boiled egg. You got enough onion on yours, Mama? Here's some more ringlets if you want some more. I know you don't want many. We had to dash out today, get some supplies, and we went uh, picked up some fresh produce. We picked up, and it was just a good day. Mmm, 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 mmm. Maggie must smell that bacon. You know, it's now this grilled chicken, this is the chicken we fixed the other night. We've made three meals out of it. I mean, you can't beat that for a pack of chicken. Hang them on. Mm -hmm. You know some more dressing? Mm -hmm. Hot bacon honey mustard dressing today. So what you would do is you take your, you take the honey mustard dressing we made last night, fry your bacon as soon as it comes out of the pan or whatever you're cooking it in. Take a knife, it should be too hot for you to touch really. Throw it in a bowl, pour your honey mustard over it, put it back in the microwave for what you put it in. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. It don't. It's, it's a hot one, but it's not. You don't boil it. But you play with your microwave, but I don't think 20 seconds will hurt it. And then just stir it up. And there you have it. And that is so good. Now, you can't make this ahead. You want it to be hot. You may even have to reheat it. But you can't go wrong, in my opinion, with hot bacon, honey mustard. Now, this isn't just for salads. This is delicious on those red potatoes. Last night, this would be delicious on those with honey mustard and bacon. It's also delicious on a sandwich. This would be delicious on that chicken sandwich we had last night, just the hot honey mustard bacon. Um, but that can be just put over chicken and eat on your plate. That is a very versatile little addition right there. Isn't it, Mom? Oh, yeah, it's good. Mama's not talking to us much tonight. Mama, what's wrong with you? Chewing my lid, I <laughs> You got right down to business, didn't you? Yeah, we had had lunch. Nothing since breakfast this morning. 
She was going to come in right now. Because we ate breakfast before 7. And uh, it's 3.43. Now lunch. You ever do that on Saturdays? Get busy. Skip a meal or two. Starve to death. It seems like we do it a lot, Mom. On Saturdays, especially. I think it's when I want some fresh pe pepper. It's like the restaurant, ain't Mama? Yeah. What is it? Say when, ma'am. When, ma'am. <laughs> That's what they say. Say when, ma'am. I know, just go to your guitar. Yeah, you would. I did, because I, I didn't plan. Is that enough? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, because I feel that's hard. But that time. But it won't need to be enough. Look at that delicious chicken. They would be asking with the mama. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put another drop of this on mine. While it's still warm. Would you like some more hum dipping? Yeah. Well, I'm a, now, like I said, make small batches of this. You know, make your big batch of honey mustard. And then come back and heat your small bowl. If you want a little bit more, heat you a little bit more. But it sure is good at the moment. Yeah, it is. Try it on a hamburger. You'll impress the neighbors. Something fierce. <laughs> Invite the neighbors over and give them a hot honey mustard bacon dressing to drizzle over their hamburger. They'll be coming back. Are y'all getting rain? Where are y'all living? Let's see here. I don't know. Please. Oh, well, thank you. Somebody says I don't chew my food, but I don't get choked on it. I chewed it up enough to get choked. Some of y'all need to quit worrying. I've told y'all, y'all worry about if I'm sitting, standing, chewing, not chewing, whatever. <laughs> Relax. Relax your brain. Just enjoy the conversation <laughs> and the meal. Um, some of y'all get way tore up, way tore up. Hi, John and Mama. Now, that's what we like. Hi, John and Mama. How y'all doing? Have a great day. Now, these people have got the right notion. You people who have opinion for everything, and I always feel like it's out there to be given, it ain't. I chew my food fine. I've been chewing food for now 50-some years now. No. Quit worrying. Find you something to worry about. It must be nice not to have anything to worry about, but... Is John chewing his food 37 times? I don't know. Let me count. <laughs> mm, I don't know how many times, but it was enough. Stop worrying about it. Let it go. I might even get up here in a minute. That'll tickle some of to death. Evidently. Folks, I don't mean to be negative, but some of y'all wear me out with that foolishness. What I wish you all would do that is look so worried about that, wish y'all would either relax and enjoy the videos for what they're for, or just scroll on, skip us. That would be the best, because we're not here for that negativity. We're not here for it. I might have to quit addressing it. I think maybe some of them will. Uh, attention seekers, and that's what they're wanting. Just let it go. No. They're always, Mama, you're tired, or you're chewing funny, or... But that's 1% of them. That's the reason we keep coming back every day. Just let it for the, go. Home. For the 99% of y'all, because y'all are family to us. We love y'all, we know y'all support us, and you're just, you're just here with us to do what we do. 
Join us at our table and enjoy a wonderful meal and some positive good times. But anyway, back to what we're here for, the food. This hot bacon honey mustard on this grilled chicken is delicious and it would be good on a sandwich. It would also be good on, thank you for those stars. Some star, Karen, thank you, they come with design, um, burst and memes. They're neat. Um, this would be good on a lot of things. It's just good on a chicken breast, but get your chicken breast done and add this before you eat it. It's just a good. Now, I don't, Mama would not agree, but I have tried it before with an imitation, real imitation bacon bits that are real bacon. It'll work in a substitute if you got some of them laying around. And when you heat those real bacon bits, even if you're not even going to use them with the honey mustard, heating them makes them taste even better, I think. I've tried that. It does. That bacon, it's just, mm, So good. Mama, what do you think of this supper? Mm. Got one mouthful. It's real good. It's good for a time. We did, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We've not had just salad for supper in a long time. We've not even had salad the last couple of times we've had steak. Mm -hmm. Because Mama is sometimes anti green. Aren't you? So light that I can't eat. Right, that's one reason it's good. Like today, you can enjoy it. <laughs> well, Mama, it's almost four. So, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You won't go to bed before ten. That's six good hours. No, I don't know if I'm still like that, Mom. Have you covered this fresh brewed coffee that you just made? Y'all's coffee. That's a piece of celery or a cauliflower. Y'all's coffee will see you through another six hours. Mmm. It's not clean. It's right on food. I've got a morning, too. Oh, wake keep you awake? Mm -hmm. Surely not this time of day, Mama. I don't think it's right. Yeah, seven or eight o'clock at night, I drink less and less. But now I don't care if it's my pot of coffee at four o'clock. That's the real thing. What do you think, Mama? You want to have some coffee? I'll get you some. I'll even get your special creamer down and you can uh, fill it full of, what is it? What are you drinking now? Hazelnut? I mix it vanilla and hazelnut. The French vanilla? Yeah, and hazelnut. You see, I only drink caffeinated tea or caffeinated coffee. That's right, best. Certain time of day. And I still don't sleep good sometimes. How'd you sleep last night? A little better than I have the last two nights. But I didn't sleep all night. Hmm. Reckon it's your conscience, Father? Could be. Warm some rain. Mama's conscience is bothering her. She can't sleep, she says. I said it could be my conscience. I don't think it's your conscience, Mama. I think it might be. You've rested up from your surgeries, which took a toll on you. And you've, uh, did you go to bed early last night? No. Sometimes, if you can't sleep at night, you <laughs> set up just a little bit later, it'll help you sleep. Yep, it was 11. No, 11. Good night. She's a night owl. She stayed up all night and rallied. Well, you're up late, too. I was in bed at 9.15. Are you sure? What time does your company leave? Well, I don't know. I never did. I went to bed right then. I don't stay up. But now, I get up. 
Mama rallies at night. <clears throat> I go into bed. I'm up at 4.30 or 5. I'm drinking coffee. I don't have to have I well, mean, the air goes out and checks out the crow situation. And she likes to, she likes to be up at 6 o'clock. And if I forget about her, and I don't get her up at 6 o'clock, it ain't shortly thereafter she's whining and wanting to go. She's like, what are you doing? Get in here. And I rush in there and <laughs> get her on her way going on. Mm-hmm. She hears us talking about her. She heard her name. You can't say everything by looking at her. You can't say a lot of words. Oh, you is one of them. Oh, is one of them. You can't say mailbox. She goes with me. You can't say uh, garden. She gets up. She she's in uh, she's in bed. And mom says, "I'm going to do the garden." I'm going to go around and check the book. Maybe I'll wake up. She'll sleep and go out by herself, but if I go out and get out of her sight, she has to take some fit and out with me. She's mama's dog. She's mama's baby. She just tolerates me being here. I mean, that's just the truth. She's like a sport. She's like you was when you was little. You didn't want me out of your sight. She don't leave. I mean, she'll use me for a good substitute. Other morning, she knows if she's going to go out, she's going to have to ask me. So she'll use me for that. But if Mama were up, now let me tell you what she was doing. This was so mean. I would be sitting right here, drinking coffee in silence. She would get up at 6 o'clock and go into Mama's bedroom, push the door open, wake her up, and here I hear both of them. And Mama Harm, why'd you come and get me? He's sitting right over there. <laughs> Wouldn't you, Mama? Yeah. I thought you were trying to do that. I didn't, really. But she would, wouldn't she? Oh, yeah. So what I did, I had to one-up her. So I started either taking her out. When Once I get my shower and get, come through the house, then we go out. Or around 6 o'clock. I just wake her up at 6 o'clock and say, come up, let's go. She don't want to be woke up early. No, I have to, you know. But if I don't, I'll get to messing around here. And uh, she's then run to there and woke Mama up. She will do that just to see if I get her. I think since I've been suggested we go out earlier, she's not done that as much. Or... No. Did she do it to you the other morning? Yeah. I mean, yeah. sitting right here. Could have, yeah. I mean, the door's right there. Y'all know the front door's right there. You think she'd say, John, I need to go out. And I don't even hear. She sleeps down the hall. Because she really wants Mama to take her for a walk. I go out with her. Not that early in the morning. Oh, I go out with her and have coffee. Listen to the birds. I love to be out early in the morning. I love to be out before the sun. I love to get out early in the morning with my cup of coffee. And welcome the sun. You laugh in the on the porch because it comes in after mm-hmm. so much. Coffee just tastes good in the morning. Coffee tastes good outside of the morning. And I ain't been past going out and starting a fire in the fire pit early in the morning. On a Saturday. Now, I don't do that so much if it's a work day. But if it's fall, if it's fall, I'll do that probably a few times. Uh, especially if we've had a fire the night before and it's easy just to kindle right up. Go out and sit in the swing before sun up and listen to that fire cracking. Makes you think you're camping. 
Exactly, Mama. I feel like I'm at the campground again. We used to stay at the campground year after year. All summer, we was at the campground. Um, even when I worked, you know, I still would go camping. There's been lots of times I've gotten ready at the campground and went to work. Because we loved it. And Daddy loved it. And Mama loved it. And he got he, he got claustrophobic with it. He didn't like being in it. He was a big camper, but he didn't like sleeping in it. He would go in it, he would sit in the recliner, he would nap in it. He'd go in and lay down in the bed and take a nap. But when it came dark, and he couldn't see out those windows, he was wanting to he go home. He had a bad panic attack one night when he woke up. Well, that's when he started getting so sick. He never would stay in it that night. He would, um, we, we would camp local sometimes just so he would be able to, because he enjoyed the fire, he enjoyed the sitting around the food, the visiting. Oh, that was his favorite. Because people, in our local park, we have a wonderful park. If you've never been to Indian Mountain State Park and you're a camper person, check it out. You have to reserve online because it's so popular. But, um, we we would go there and stay, and a lot of locals use that part. They take their camper over there, maybe two miles, maybe five miles, whatever. I know camping at home, it's still camping. We used to say the same thing. I wouldn't come over here to the park to camp. <laughs> Once you get over there, you set up, you eat, and you enjoy friends, and except you know your people. I mean, there would might be twenty five people there that we knew locals. So he loved. He loved to socialize and all day long. He'd be out there early in the morning and sit out there and under the awning all day. Would love it. But when nighttime came, he said, I'm going home. This is where he got real sick. I'm going home. And mom said, Well, just stay. Try it tonight. You can go home if you don't like it. Nope. I'm going home. Y'all go. <laughs> he didn't care for it after that one time, did he? No, he had it bad. But up until then, we, that's when we stopped, when he quit. You know, we stopped long before he passed away. and um, But before then, there were many years went by that we camped most of our weekend. If it's cold or... Even when it was cold, we would go back in October. Long as they had the water and stuff. Anyway, that's an old topic. You know how that is. Reminiscences. That's why it's good. <laughs> so we went today and picked out some tile from Mama's porch. Oh, yeah. We were in a dilemma. So the sunroom has got tile. And the sun porch had the same tile. So now that we've extended it out, do you think they have that tile? No. Do you think they have anything remotely? And this isn't some exotic tile. Beige tile. It's beige. <laughs> beige. Boring. Cannot find anything to even remotely match it. I mean, like, if you, I went and thought, well, at least we can find something we lay down beside of it. Mm. You know, you could, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beige is hard to match. You folks that wear a lot of black. You know, when you get a black shirt and a black pair of pants, you think, well, it's black and black. It should match. Yeah, mm -hmm. Same kind of thing with this tile. Well, they didn't even have anything even closely. And we went to two places. And we went to the uh, Lowe's and we went, mm -mm, no, mm -mm. Even when I bought the tile seven years ago, I said to myself, self, if you ever need more of this, this will be easy to match. You lied to yourself. I did, Mama. <laughs> you couldn't match it. But let me tell you what they have now. Some of you people probably don't know because some of us people didn't know. So now they have a tile that's called plank tile. And it looks like hard wood, but it's tile. Except it's dull with the pile. Mama's not crazy about the dolls. It's a, it's not a slick, slick texture. So no, but you don't want I don't want you falling on it. It's a rougher texture and that keeps it from looking. The reason I want tile and non-hardwood up there is because 
That's the in and out door for the garden. That's the in and out door for the backyard and the patio. And if we leave the windows up, and forget. And that's where Mama puts her flowers. And that's where Maggie will stay a lot because Maggie loves those rooms. Anything that's got a lot of windows and light, and she can lay and look out the door and check for presents. Yeah, she's been laying on my feet, literally. I'm not saying, oh, she's been close. She has been on my feet all evening when the storms, the thunder started rolling, Maggie came to me. I'm her best friend. But anyhow, we found tile that matches our mama's hardwood. Gun stock is the type of hardwood she has. So they had a gun stock tile. So it's it's a wider plank, but it still is the same color. So I don't have to worry about matching that sunroom. We can put that color up there. And it wasn't, it was a dollar, or was it, what a whole dollar more was it than the other? I don't think so. It wasn't even that much more, but it matches exactly her hardwood. For it to not, to not have none to match, I thought it was really good. To say Mama was excited to finally get that checked off her list is a understatement because that's worried her more than any of the whole trying to get the porch fixed. You can't get stuff to match and you don't want checkerboard out there. I mean, no. all different shades and colors. We'll take y'all out there when we get it, when they get closer coming along. Right now, it's just a, it's just needs some, it just needs a little help. I mean, not it's not a little, a lot. It's not even safe to walk out there. There's, there's insulation piled up. There's well, he did move the insulation there's through. baseboards that have just been freshly painted. I won't go out there because I know I'll get paint on something. Uh, so they're working every day up there, about every day. So it's, it's coming along. Uh, we hope this is an area that we can uh, video and sit around and talk. And we're going to have a fireplace out there. And uh, it's going to be like a big family room. But it's going to be a porch. It's all enclosed. So it won't be uh, anything like a traditional back porch but it, it, it's full of windows so you can open them if you want to and let the air blow through and that's what we plan on doing and uh, it's going to be just a you know we we're just real livers here we don't we don't have a parlor or a fancy eating room everything we have is i mean our dining room table came out of a, a 80 year old guy's workshop and it looks at Mama C. But we love it. But guess what? When we have friends and family over to eat on it, we ain't worried about it. We ain't worried about it. Y'all have seen it. Uh, it's just three big wide planks. And it's got some nail marks on it. And it's got. But I wouldn't take anything for it because I absolutely love it. Oh. Uh, I bet people listen to this and they say, them people are pitiful. Yeah, we are. <laughs> That's for sure. They've got an old hundred year old table that probably came out of, it's come out of an old workshop. He built the tables. There was two of them. My friend got one and I got one at an auction. As soon as we seen them, I said, that would be a nice table. And they said, yeah, that would be a good work table to do crafts on. I said, are you kidding that make a good dining room. <laughs> Soon as Mama seen it, what'd you say? Oh, I put no. that in my dining room. Oh, no, we had a... Come on, Mama, we, open your eyes. <laughs> we had to put it out there in that smaller room in order to keep it. And as soon as we got the dining room fixed to get it in it, we moved it in there. And it looked a whole lot better in there with a lot more space around it. We kind of had it. It right. seats 10, 11 people. 8, 9, 10 people. And um, we put, you know, tablecloths stuff on it when we need to. But most of the time, time it's just the bare wood. wood. I didn't do a thing to it except clean it. It was varnished, it's slick. Um, some of it's slick, some of it's not. We'll show it to y'all sometime more in there. Um, but anyway, that's that. Mama, I guess I'm rambling at this point. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, you fixed me for a cup of coffee. You know I get to talking when I get 
That's that casting they get. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's cooling down now. I can really go up. I think that's what you're doing. Because it was, I thought it was straight. It just got the curtain in there. I, I love old furniture. Bonnie, I love a piece of furniture that has a story. I don't care if it's my family's story or somebody else's family's story. I love pieces from the past. I don't want, and, and I'm not saying anything about you all, so don't tell. Oh, he said, no, this is just personal preference. It's reason. Baskin Robbins ice cream has 31 flavors because there's different people that like different things. Um, if you gave me a choice and you said, we'll pay for it either way, you can go buy a brand new dining room outfit, everything to match, shiny, beautiful, polished, no scratches, no blemishes. Or you can look around at secondhand stores and, and salvage places and you can rummage you up some pieces. You are rummaging. I've been saying, let's hit them thrift stores and let's hit those old antique. I want, you know, like I, we've got different pieces of furniture in our dining room now. You know, two pieces of it match. That, what you mean? that was my granny's, a buffet in a china cabinet, but they're old. Yeah. They were secondhand when she got them. She was born 1919. She got married 1940. I don't know, she's 18, 19. So you do the man. And um, her oldest sister gave her that old dining room suit. So it's certainly not new, but it's still, it's got memories from me. She always had in her house, it's, you know. And. I got my grandma's old library table. Here. Mama's grandma's table. And when I look at that table, I know where it came from. Um, we've got an old other china cabinet in there. And then over Granny's buffet, Mama's great, Mama's grandma's mirror is hanging over it. That was on a buffet. That was on a buffet. It but it don't match my Granny's buffet. But we hung it over it anyway. And I love it. And I wouldn't take nothing for it. You got your daddy's little roll top of this Everything's got a bag of cinnamon bag. I love to go to um, thrift stores or these, uh, what did we go last week? Vendors, malls. Yeah. They have tons of stuff. You all saw that little bowl that I picked up. Mama, you sing and dance for Mama. Show this other wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing I got. Oh, let, tell me what it is. I'm going to go get it. It's like I have to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> sing and dance, Mama. Sing and dance. You can do both. Mm. Now what are you getting? I'll probably have to go get it anyway. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Mama? You can't find it where I put stuff up. Now that's a fact. Mama, I'll put something somewhere and I go back to get it and I say, well, Mama, where's that? She can't find it. Now, folks, can you imagine... The history. This is an old, old prop. It's got a lid. It's had a cork. Um, this was a part of our finds last Saturday. Mm-hmm. This crock would easily be over a hundred dollars. Now I don't know who had it, but it's authentic. I seen this and I loved it. Wouldn't even look at it. I mean, I looked at it, it was sitting on the bottom shelf. Wouldn't even pick it up to see the little tag on it. That's not new. If you pick it up, go, you don't want to fool with it. I passed back by it and I thought, let's just see how much it is. Because I've just seen one this size for $49.99. Let's let's see how much that one is. It was forty nine dollars. Now I asked when we got up front. I said, "Can you make sure this is the right price on this?" And she said, "Yeah, that's the right booth and that's the right price." And I said, 
Nobody can switch those tags. She said no. Well, it's tied. Tied around this right here. And I said, I don't want it. You know, I don't want it wrongly. It's echo. Not my cook can hear it. When I'm talking, I can hear it in that come out. Um, I said, I want to make sure this is right because that's extremely low price. She said, it is a good deal, but yep, it's the right thing and this goes to that booth. I could not believe it, but that's the kind of finds you find. That's worth the day out. This is, it doesn't smell, so I don't know if they had pickles in it or what. Probably didn't have moonshine in it or anything like that because this is like a home. I mean, this would have been um, something you would have pickled in or canned something, yeah. But it's wonderful. Just love it. Don't know what in the world I'm going to do with it. But I'm going to have it. Set it around and dust it. Set it around and dust it. <laughs> Probably put it on one of the hearts. And just look at it. And appreciate it. Now, I don't know the story behind it. I have no idea. But it's... Somebody took care of it. Somebody took care of it. It, okay. it was loved by somebody. We've got some old crocs. We've got some old churns. It's made out similar to this. Uh, some of them got the churns. We even got their original wooden lids on them. And every once in a while, I take the lids uh, to all the, the what we're blessed to have. Uh, we've only got two lids, I think. They're right two. Mm -hmm. And I linseed oil them and, and you know try to preserve them as best I can and the dashes and all that. Uh, one of them was your friend's. The one I think is not the original, but it's an old uh, churn. It's an old lid in. Can y'all hear that? Guys, sure. Uh, so I take care of it. It's, it's, it's 80 plus years old. No matter if it is replacement. And I try to lean seed oil on them. Do all that. That's a drinking jug. That's a big drinking jug. Is it a drinking jug? Now I've seen the drinking jugs. Prop it on your shoulder. Oh, Kevin, this ain't the. This is a three gallon jug. The camera might have made it look different, but yeah, I've seen what you're talking about. And that's what runs $49 when you're out in the corner. I don't, this could be one of those. I don't know. <laughs> I hate to have to be drinking out of it, even coffee. Um, I've seen those little ones, and I've got one of them that was my granny's. This probably was something they carried water in, like went to a well or something or another, filled it full of water. It was a water pitcher or something. Because this was for some... It's not had much in it that smells or anything, because a lot of times you can smell smells in them. But this one has probably been a water jug, is what I imagined it to be. Because, you know, everybody wasn't blessed with a well. A lot of people had to go to the creek and get their water. And a lot of people had to go to the neighbor's well or to a local um, watering hole. We used to have one here. It was a pipe nail driven, what nail? A pipe driven into a rock and a, and a spring was behind that rock. And it would come out and people would take milk jugs when I was a kid and get water. But this one is probably something they would take to the well or to a place and gather water like that and have it to to use the water. Now this one is a drinking jug. This may not be the original uh, corn cob, but it's, it's been in there for a hundred years. Um, it used to come out. Well, it's good sitting up on it. Let me go look at the door. This was a corn cob It's been stomper. there since I've been in the family. Now, they would grab these like this, and they would put them over their shoulder, and they would drink, and they would drink moonshine out of them, or they would drink water, whatever they had. But this is an old original, and that did use corn cobs for corks. And that probably is close to the original, Maybe a replacement from the original, but this is what I'm talking about. It's usually forty nine, fifty dollars if you find them out somewhere. And here's this one. 
You can see why I, I thought I'm not even going to attend because goodness gracious, I think it'd be two hundred dollars. I mean, you're talking about a difference. So this is what a deal. I mean, this is what you usually find out about. And then I seen this one. I was just like in awe. This is almost like a number three churn with a lid. Ain't that a three there? It's a three. Um, so it probably would have been a ch number three churn, but if they've had this, is this is part of the original though, I and mean, then all that's it's a number three jug. Mm -hmm. And I th figure about three, it'd be a three gallon. Ugh. But I told you we'd show you some of our finds. That's the only two things we really got that in some mom might have got a knickknack or something. But um, we don't buy them out when we go. We find one or two key pieces that really, really I like. Uh, you bought everything you've seen. Why you'd be behind, you wouldn't have nowhere to put nothing. We're that way already. Oh, we're that way. oh, mercy, folks. Here we go. Chatting away. I love to chat with y'all. Y'all like family to us. We love having you at our table. We love just sitting around talking about old times, old jugs, old memories, lightning bugs in a mason jar. All that fun stuff. Um, if you live somewhere where it's clear tonight, go out and look around. And wish upon a shooting star about every 30 seconds because you'll see them. The Perseid showers will be coming through and I hope it's a good year for them. Find you a dark place. If you live where there's a lot of street lights, you won't see hardly any. Uh, so head on up somewhere that's dark, but yet you can see it. There's supposed to be tonight and tomorrow night. Well, if it don't clear off, it's supposed to clear off later tonight. It's back up tomorrow. Well, I guess I'll be doing night shift tonight with Mama. If it's pretty, it'll go on. Mama's a sky watcher. Are y'all sky watchers? If Mama hears anything on the news about <laughs> a ring around the moon, or a planet lining up, or a big extra bright star. Yeah, I like to see it. The neighbors could testify. While we've seen that woman out in her nightgown and her house <laughs> coat more times than a few, looking straight up in the air. Yep. <laughs> I always go out with her because I'm afraid a booger will get her. She's so little, a coyote would peck her off. It couldn't peck Maggie, so I don't think it would peck Oh, I don't know, Mama. You they, little. They can get baby coyotes going on, Yeah. So y'all look at the Perseids tonight. Um, lunar eclipses. Mama's out there looking straight up. You have to go out if you see them. Sometimes I'm sitting in the swing drinking coffee even at 2 o'clock in the morning. Saying, you see it yet? You say, well, it ain't out. Let's go on in. <laughs> My favorite line I use on her. And she'll say, oh, you always say that. And I uh, will go out and look at it. Now, I could, you know, this is me. This is my... I can watch it on the news next day. <laughs> yeah, I'll sit in the morning on the news. But, like, you know, we went to the Grand Canyon one time years ago. And I was so excited to see the Grand Canyon. Loved it. Went out, looked around. We was there about 20, 30 minutes looking and checking it out. An hour. We was there an hour already. And here come the people we were, the tour people. And she said, y'all enjoy the Grand Canyon. Now we got about three more hours and we're going to stay till sunset so y'all can see the color changes. I looked at mom and I said, we expect us to stay here and look at this hole for three more hours? <laughs> it was pretty. Don't get me wrong. But it just don't take me long to look at the Grand Canyon. So an hour was great. Hour and a half or two hours would have been fine. But four hours at the Grand Canyon? Folks, you may have been there. You may have found more to do than me. I found a bench and sat there for two hours and looked. I enjoyed it. Mamas took pictures and they did a little walk. And you just mm -hmm. done something else inside. Yeah, we So the same thing. We get out and the stars are aligned and the planets are shining or whatever. And I'll stand there and look at it for, you know, three minutes, four. And then I'll say, well, Mama, have you seen enough of the star? Or, 
How long does it take you to look at a star? It takes me a long time. And she'll say, you always say that. So that's when I go sit on the swing and let her stand there and look at it and take it off. It takes you a long time to look at a star, I don't know. I'm afraid it might change when I release it. <laughs> Oh, well. Y'all go out and look at the shooting stars tonight. Enjoy yourselves. Um, we're going to if if this, you know, cloudy situation lightens up. But I looked on my phone. It says it's supposed to be raining through the movie, actually. It's supposed to clear off this scene and start back up in the morning. Well, I hope so, Mom. If it does, yeah. you'll get a Perseid shower. Yeah, I have to see that. We can sit I on the swing. We can sit. You've got brand new eyes now. I know it. We can go out on the patio in the back and sit in the swing, look straight up. Mm -hmm. I'll have coffee. At that time? Mama, I've drank it till bedtime. Now, I, I was in there for about a week. I was trying to cut off at six and seven. It didn't it, work out really good. You've made a fresh pot. And I will probably be sipping around on it till that time, whatever time that is. Mama keeps me a fresh part of the evenings most of the time. When y'all see me, it's because Mama's good to me and she's knowing a fresh pot because she knows there wasn't none left this morning. If you drink some, take some to work with you, and I drink some, and I get a lot of the workers. A little. He drinks some. Then eight. He says he's done half his quarter. A lot of people do three cups of the morning or two cups of the morning. That's all they want. And there ain't none left for you when you come home. So that means another pot. Did y'all hear Mama? She's talking low. She says she makes another pot of the evenings because she's sweet like that. I am sweet. You're just adorable. Why did you say more about all this thing? Well, at least you ain't having a grudge. Me? Oh, I said you was to mend your conscience by oh, you couldn't, I couldn't sleep. sleep. That's what it was. I well, that's what they say, Mama. If you can't sleep, your conscience must have been bothering you. That's what you used to say to me. Yeah. What have you done today that your conscience is bothering you? I said, I can't sleep. I don't want to go to bed. I can't sleep. Well, what's wrong? Your conscience bothering you? What have you done to get in trouble? My granny used to say that too. Or my granny would say, but some of y'all may have heard this. My granny would say, somebody's dreaming about you. Uh, well, if you can't sleep, it means somebody's dreaming about you. And I'd say, well, I wish they'd wake up so I could sleep a while. Yep, she always said She always also would say, if it was raining and the sun was shining, uh, the devil's beating his wife. I didn't know he was married. And then she would also say, when the evening and the fall, a lot of times you'll see the sun shining, and there'll be beams of sunlight coming through the clouds and hitting the earth. She said, sun's drawing water for a rainy day. Y'all ever heard that? If, if it was dry, and somebody in church said, well, we got a little share of rain. Granny said, well, we must not have paid the preacher. We didn't get a drop. <laughs> or if somebody else, if we got rain and nobody said, well, you must not have paid the preacher. Now, I don't know where that come from, but that was an old saying. Yeah. She'd say it all the time. If it rained hard, it was always it rained cats and dogs. It rained cats and dogs. Now, I do know where that came from. Back in... A long time ago, they had thatched roofs, and cats and dogs would go up on the roof and make beds. And when it would come a, drain, a downpour of rain, sometimes they would wiggle into that hay so deep they'd fall through. And that's the reason you have canopy beds, because the last thing you wanted to do was to go to bed at night and have a cat or a dog fall down on you while you was asleep. <laughs> so they would tie a blanket or a sheet on poles above their bed to keep anything from falling on the ceiling. Just a little fact for y'all. All right, Mom, you've talked enough. I know it. So, man, Jim. <laughs> Say goodbye, Mama. Goodbye, Mama. All right, good night.
Y'all yeah. yeah. yeah, have a blessed night. Join us in the morning if you will for Sunday School Highlights. And uh, we'll do Southern Sunday Lunch tomorrow of something. It may be a bologna sandwich because we got yeah. fresh bologna today from oh, the yeah. deli. And fresh corn tomatoes. And fresh corn tomatoes. I don't know what it'll be really. Whatever Mama decides in the morning. But I'm just telling you, odds are, ain't nothing wrong with a good bologna sandwich. Y'all have a good night. Bye. Good night.